Hey, howdy hey, and welcome back to Emily's Adventures in Horrorland. And here in Britain it is swelteringly hot, so I will be removing this. Now then, I'm currently waiting for eBay to deliver one of the 13 films that you guys have requested, which is amazing, thank you very much. So in the meantime, I'll be watching Something in the Woods. It's about Bigfoot. One could argue that vampires and werewolves have been done to death. And hey, why not focus on something else for once, like yetis, or sphinxes, or, I don't know, tea kettlers? Well, for my non-American and non-Canadian viewers, let me remind you that almost all reports of the Sasquatch have stated that he is quite shy and not a man-killer. Now I hear you all saying, Ah, come on, Shmem, this something in the woods is a horror movie, they can write whatever they want. Oh, really? Can they? Can they really? Well, let's just see about that. Here we go. <laughs> Inspired by actual events. I don't think I need to add anything to that, do I? This character here drives to visit his parents while listening to a radio phone-in segment about Bigfoot, and barely two seconds after he announces the topic of the day, people call in to voice their belief in the creature. He comes tearing through my garden. I run and got my shotgun, and he let out a scream that'll curl your eyebrows. But yeah, I believe. And that caller shot a guy. And here's the main problem that I have with, um... Sitwa. The pacing. More specifically, the time they spend dwelling on absolutely nothing. Hey son, how are you doing? Alright. You need any help with anything? Yeah, can you help me put that plant in the wheelbarrow and get that up to the house there? By the way, uh, lunch will be ready in a bit. Your mom made sandwiches. Oh yeah, she told me on the way over here. Sounds great. Riveting stuff there. Sandwiches. And I should let you know that this character starts narrating shortly after this. My dad worked in the lumber industry his whole life and grew up in the woods. He took over the company when my grandfather passed. Out of nowhere. It doesn't help that he can't read his lines worth a damn. Did you get enough, son? Oh, yes, sir. I'm stuffed. Yes. Yes, you are. Anyway, this guy, whose name I don't know, asks his father if there's anything in the woods. We flash back to the father talking to his friend John, who the film is actually about, meaning another flashback. So basically, we're watching someone tell a story about a friend telling a story. John is the foreman of a lumber yard. And honestly, at this point, I didn't bother figuring out who the others were. These two have already mentioned that John is honest and trustworthy, so that saved us some time developing the character. Thank you very much, movie. John's son is at home, playing very convincingly with a plane. When this happens. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. Meanwhile, back at the work site, John gives his co-worker a ticking off. Well, I know it won't happen again, Otis, because I'm gonna dock you half a day. Look, John, it was only one beer. Well, that's one beer too many, Carl. I've already warned you. Now, Otis, sign the form. I said it won't happen again. I know it won't happen again because I'm docking for half a day. Wait, wait, well, no, no, you, you already said that. I, work my butt off on this I could play this on a loop indefinitely. Now, Otis, sign the form. I said it won't happen again. I know it won't happen again because I'm docking for half a day. Now, Otis, sign the form. I said it won't happen again. I know it won't happen again because I'm docking for half a day. Now, Otis, sign the form. I said it won't happen again. Otis, I'm not going to argue with you. You either sign the form or you get to step in. I said it won't happen again. I know it won't happen again because I'm docking for half a day. I already cleared it through Chuck. He wants you to sign the form or you're out of here. Oh, oh, okay. He, he signed the form. Now this shot right here pisses me off. What are we looking at? Is the gnome hiding here somewhere? No, Carl, I know you're an older for, for drinking buddies and stuff. You know, yeah. I know you're looking at him, but you know, he made his decision. We had a talk last week. More of this. Just no action, no meaningful dialogue, no pretty visuals to look at. I wish I was playing Firewatch. I wish you were too. You ain't gonna get anybody else out here to run a crew like we do. You know what this feels like to me? The world's most carelessly directed secondary school play. Everyone just stands around with their arms by their sides, waiting to say their next line. They even get off a chair as if on cue. For comparison, here's a section of a school play that I was in. No snakes gonna be coming out. We don't have any flashlights. It's not the snakes I'm worried about. They've gone. Oh good. I don't know. Mr. Grimm says that if they're away too long, they they forget who they were. So John goes home to his family, and his young son Jacob tells of the Bigfoot sighting. And is it just me, or does the oldest son have a completely different accent from his parents? Bears can walk on two legs for a short distance, son. It smelled like rotten garbage. It nearly gagged me. 
It had to be big because it was breaking branches and it was like really heavy steps. They go out to investigate and find this. That don't look like bear fur. It looks like fake fur is what it looks like. Oh, come on! That dude in the gorilla costume isn't even trying. Just look at him. He can't be asked. John decides to run away from him anyway. Whoa, uh, deforestation is Bigfoot. They tumble inside, John wonders about calling the sheriff, then decides not to, and his wife is clearly terrified. Are you sure it wasn't a bear? This wasn't no bear. A and another thing, do you know how many times they say it ain't no bear? It's unbelievable. It wasn't no bear. That don't look like bear fur. What do you think it is? A bear? No. Are you sure it wasn't a bear? This wasn't no bear. It's not really a bear. All right, so if it's not a bear, then what is it? Big Face makes a howling noise all night, but still nobody calls the sheriff. Jacob does spot the creature in the night, though. <laughs> oh, look, they're friends. How terrifying. Actually, I think I see where they were going with this. Um, I've noticed in some horror movies there is a trope of the child who has a strange unquestioning connection with the monster slash force of pure evil. A bit like um, Carol Ann from Poltergeist or Amy Lutz from the Amityville Horror, even Danny from The Shining. But I think this works best when the child in question is younger than this one appears to be, and also when the force of evil in question happens to be scary. By the next morning, we're at the stage of everyone learning to live with Big Nose like he's a slightly annoying neighbor's dog. That is, until Jacob reveals he was at his window. Are you sure it just wasn't a dream? Well, it wasn't no bear. <laughs> so John invites his friends around, and they debate whether or not Foot Big actually exists. All anecdotal evidence. I do like that they mention this. Didn't somebody come forward and say that the that, that guy faked the tracks? Yeah, but the wood stompers that that man had actually used were not the same tracks, and they didn't match what crew found. And then the real tracks they find look so obviously stomped in. Ain't no man could have made this. Ah, haha. Ha. I beg to differ. They go hunting in the woods, and we get a few interesting sweeping shots, and some confusing editing choices. The days turned into weeks, which turned into months, turned into years. Hey, quit screwing around. <laughs> After failing to shoot the creature, again, they decide to wait at the house until dark. Some hunters you turned out to be. And I'm thinking it's old bears go go fair and take a bite out of my rear end, you know? Dale, I bet you about dropped some mud in your pants on that one. I <laughs> dang near did. I had to check my drawers for sure. Is this acting? I mean, the bear story is more exciting than anything else we've had so far. Now I'm kind of sad that there's something in the woods ain't no bear. Another night goes by, John tries to shoot it and fails. Meanwhile, his animals are getting carried off and eaten. The family goes to church and <laughs> Crikey blimey, this priest! Look at him! I mean, we're all sinners and we can't forgive each other for these petty things that we do. And sometimes, I'll say it, sometimes- It's like they pulled some guy off the street to fill the role because they couldn't find anyone else to fit their one collared shirt. Even the protagonist is too bored to pay him any attention. Fall short the glory of God. It says it in the Bible. John plans to talk to the sheriff about the Sasquatch, and then his employees raise his ire by speaking inappropriately within earshot of his kids. What you gonna do? Go and run and tattle to the sheriff now, John? Oh no. Oh no, I gotta talk to the sheriff about an entirely different matter, Otis. Besides, I don't need the sheriff to handle you. Mike! <laughs> <Hi. Hi. laughs> oh. oh, I wish I was drunk right now. I could get drunk. Yeah, oh no, I can't. <sighs> John explains his troubles to the sheriff. I didn't want you to think I was crazy, sheriff. So as you can see, I got you some proof right here. There it is. As you can see, it's clearly not a bear. <laughs> I'm sorry. The sheriff doesn't think John's crazy, eliminating any tension, as cliched as it would have been. I'd like to help, but I can't go off on some wild goose chase trying to find this thing. But if you happen to capture it or kill it. They overlapped each other. Just do another take! God, donut. A neighbor explains to John that the creature is the legendary Sasquatch, and says that it will most likely not attack slash kill John or his family. Again, any tension just evaporates on the spot. Nothing to be scared of in this film. I mean, sure, the creatures are killing animals, but the animals are not the protagonists of this film, because that would actually be interesting. Come on. Come on, you can do this. You the man, come on. Just 22 minutes to go. 
Hmm. John heads out at night, kills a hog by mistake, and goes to bed. So you think it's still around then? Why wouldn't it be? He didn't shoot. <sighs> Eighteen minutes to go. <laughs> Come back. I only want to eat your chickens. No, 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 wait. I've got a better one. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ? Foot Foot continues to terrorise the family and... Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Just started drifting off. Well, you can't just leave me hanging like that. We're just getting to the good part. Anyway, the attacks against John and his family continue. At least I think it's an attack. From the wind. You left the wind? Oh, for fuck's sake. It turns out there are two Sasquatches. Twist. And then the family very slowly pulls the car away. And that's where John's story ends. But there's still a few minutes of film to go. Most people say you have to see it for yourself to believe. I guess they're right. Do they exist? Decide for yourself. What an amazing true story. Now, far be it from me to discourage anybody from making their own horror movie, especially if the subject of that movie is very dear and close to their heart. But may I tentatively advise that actual events by themselves may not necessarily make for good horror fiction. This film has almost nothing to recommend it. The music is occasionally good, but the acting, camera angles, pacing, story, special effects, costuming, etc. are all dreadful. This might be fun to watch drunk with friends, but for me, I had to take regular breaks just to get through the first viewing. For that reason, I give this film three and a half jam sandwiches out of ten. Well, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio. All right, it won't happen again.